Well, it's a good thing I've already put on my robe and wizard hat, because we're playing some Dungeons and Dragons this week, <laughs> or more specifically, Neverwinter Nights, an enhanced edition developed originally by Bioware and so, quote unquote salvaged by Beamdog. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, developed on the Aurora engine, the now venerable one. Um, and you can pick it up for about 20 bucks, uh, though we didn't have to pay anything for it because they sent us keys. What is it? Return to the Forgotten Realms in the best selling Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. Combines all the content in Diamond Edition with all new enhanced features, includes 100 hours of award winning adventures and tools to create your own. This is Chair QA Edition. This is where we take a game, play it, talk about it, give our opinions, maybe perform a little bit of quality assurance that should have been done originally before they put this out on sale for twenty dollars well, again we'll get to that in a little bit we read everything on the chair scale one chair means it's garbage two chairs means that it's math three chairs means that's pretty good four chairs means that's awesome and we got our make we got our categories of doom which we apply them to mixed with working shiny sounds controls and fun so speaking of going on fantastical adventures getting this shit working was a bit of a fantastical adventure <laughs> mother and you want to tell us about it okay man adventures in this game I'm going to be real quick because I'm going to kind of tap out after this. Uh, new fucking rule, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If I have to touch an INI &I file in 2018, I minus two chairs right off the bat. We mix with the working right that. And if like molesting said INI &I file uh, doesn't sort your issue, another chair right there. You're down to one right there. Because your menus, the menus in this game, guys, it just didn't work. You know, I tried windowed. I tried full screen. I tried borderless, 1080p, 720p, 2160p. None of it wasn't having it. The cursor basically with UI scaling is, makes it out of alignment, which you can kind of futz around and get around until I got up to the character creation with that. And then I was just stuck. I did manage to get it to work because, you know, hey, that, that's going to happen. Everyone likes a good challenge. I get it to work at 2160p, 3840 by 2160, borderless full screen, minus UI scaling. That, uh, yeah, that took 27 minutes of just straight futzing trying to figure this out. And after that, I really couldn't play the game because I had two options. I had the original UI at UHD, which genuinely put the text in pencil lines, making it unreadable. Or I could play... Same scenario, 1080p windowed, which still had the text at an unreadable state. So that really irritated me. I also noticed that it hangs on cloud sync if you have to force close, because you kind of got to force close something if it constantly hangs. Uh, it did start on the wrong DAC, but, you know, after all the other bullshit, that hardly seems worth a mention. So I do want to say this. Anyone playing the home game, because I know you're out there listening is I don't want to hear an FSM damn word about everything I just pointed out because that reads like a pre-flight checklist from the review section on the Steam store, man. Uh, I just couldn't get it to work. And what couldn't you get it to work on? What are you running some weird, crazy distribution? I'm running 1710 with an NVIDIA 980 Ryzen 1700 displayed at UHD and everything else. And this just wasn't having it. Better luck next time, guys, because this is the wrong type of enhancement, because I know Jordan's going to point out the Lutris version works better than this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. When you're being outdone by Strider, you might want to rethink some of the decisions that got you to that point. Yeah, so uh, a couple things. You can disable UI scaling in the uh, INI file. Uh, if you want the mouse to be in sync you gotta set enable hardware mouse equals to one and oh my god so many out of the box issues if you started if you start up some of the premium campaigns the uh the shadow thief one yeah you can't save in that game it just fails you cannot load it anymore um that's bad um this is not something that should have made it to production i'm sorry beam dog i know you've been doing pretty well with the other enhanced editions but you had an open beta for this and you still didn't fix any of these issues. And that is just frankly unacceptable in this day and age. Um, the game is fully playable. Once you fix these issues, aside from the odd time when the UI burps and you can't do anything and you got to quit and uh, reload the game. Uh, hopefully you didn't start that one campaign where you can't actually save because otherwise you're straight fucked. You still got to disable cloud saves, man, this is, and, it, there's there's no difference from like Ryzen land to Intel land because on the 6700K with the GTX 980 running Fedora 2664 bit, 
all these issues still exist. The game performs fine once you get in there, but if you have to do go through this entire rigmarole just to get the game to a point where you can play it, you've earned that one chair. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's got a lot of issues. Uh, full screen doesn't work. Uh, you can now uh, actually set it to uh, borderless maximized from the INI file, but you have to crack open the INI file. And like Fan already mentioned and Jordan mentioned too, uh, the cloud saves cause issues. Uh, sometimes you can't even launch the game. It'll wait for like 30 seconds before it gives you a little error message saying, oh, you may have launched the game from another window because the cloud saves are out of sync with your local saves. Yes, that's because you didn't upload them in it. But yeah, no, it, 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 it's got a lot of issues. But we'll get to those in a moment. Two chairs from me because, yeah, you can play the game, but it's... Even at 1080p, it has issues. Hmm. Yeah, so that's one chair for mixed with the working. Up next to Shiny and Sounds, Vin, are, are, are we just going to run past you for the rest of these? Or, uh... Uh, Vin, away. Vin, away. All right. So, welcome to the Jordan and Pedro Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> hour 30 minutes. Nerds! Uh, I'm, I'm still here. It's yeah, spirit. buddy. I, I'm spooky Vin. Spooky Vin. All right, yeah. Uh, graphics. Um just like 2003 used to make. It wasn't a bad looking game back then. And <laughs> it looks about the same now in the enhanced edition. You can install uh, some of the, in the uh, Steam Workshop, they have the community expansion pack, they have a bunch of portrait packs, and they have the HD texture packs. So you can install them and the game looks a little better. But yeah, it's still, it's still that uh, 2003 era stuff. The soundtrack's good. I mean, they, they had some decent, uh, they had a decent composer on there. As as as, Bi- as Bioware is often want to do, mm-hmm. but I've heard all this stuff before. But it, it gets a bad two cheers. Yeah, uh, considering yeah, it came out in two thousand and two originally, and then in two thousand and three for Linux, it looks very blocky. Uh, the one saving grace are the awesome community mods, which improved the graphics a lot. There's uh there's not a whole lot in the Steam Workshop right now, but if you go to the Neverwinter Vault, you get entire uh, override packs that replace textures, uh, introduce shaders, do all of that. I think the shader ones are currently limited to DX9, so they don't work on Linux, but with the improvements that Beamdog has made to the backwards engine, well, I say improvements, uh, the, the background engine, not backwards, uh, <laughs> Uh, I hope, I hope that, uh, those shader mods and everything else will eventually come to Linux. And they did release a mod that, uh, introduces, uh, height, eye res textures and a bunch of other stuff. Big, uh, yes for me is the Jeremy Soul audio. It's like he composed, you may know Jeremy Soul from the Elder Scrolls series. And when it came to Hordes of the Underdark... They uh, Bioware simply said, yo, could you do us a couple of songs? And he did. And Horrors of the Inner Dark is my favorite campaign, and the audio plays a big part of that. I can't, you know, give it a full score by any means or measure, because anti-aliasing still doesn't work. Depth of field is crap. It makes everything look blurry. And there are quite a few issues with the graphics uh, that uh, weren't present in the original version, but I think they're aware of that. At least they say they're aware of that. So it remains to be seen whether they'll fix it. So two chairs for me too. Well, that's one chair for Shiny and Sense because just assume Ben gets the one chair on all the other categories. Mm-hmm. Controls. Um, yeah, I still I still maintain that uh, like the Windows Temple of Elemental Evil, the one that came out a little bit after this, yeah. is the gold mm-hmm. standard for like 3.5 era um D D controls because they basically took the radial menu from neverwinter nights and made it suck less um mm-hmm. but the controls are serviceable you pause the game you right click you can interact with the objects you can cast your spells they give you all the weird power attack shove 3.5 combat options that you know and or love um yeah that gets about three chairs from me i i, I yeah, will, I will a- say though i hate games that will not let you pan with wazd and expect you to use a mouse. That's just annoying. Yeah. 
uh, here, uh, they let you pan, they let you control the character, they let you basically do everything with the keyboard, and you actually have three different uh, camera styles. You have the typical sky cam, the overhead follow camera that's more along the lines of what you'd get with uh, Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Hey, same engine, go figure. Uh, and uh, the quote-unquote free camera, which isn't really free so put heavy air quotes around that free bit because the camera is still locked to your character but it gives you a wider uh range of motion would you, would you, you say it's also like play free the... not as in software or beer yes neither of those uh <laughs> but you can play the game if you want if you don't want to use the keyboard at all you can just play the game with the mouse and it works uh the mouse, if you want to, if you're one of those uh, keyboard-centric people, you only really need a mouse to deal with the UI, the inventory, and whatnot. And, well, the UI, since I brought that up, uh, in 2018, that's an old-ass-looking UI. But there are mods for that, too. Three chairs. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, two chairs for the control segments. Pedro, did you, did you have fun playing this? Did, th- did this do anything for you? No. See, I have to qualify that because Neverwinter Nights is my all-time favorite Linux game. Uh, I'm hoping that the Enhanced Edition will live up to its enhanced name, but it's really hard to ignore the technical issues at play here. From defaulting to a broken-ass scaling system, even at 1080p, they default to fucking scaling. They still fail at full screen, anti-aliasing is non-existent, depth of field is horrible, and general brokenness in even the Steam Cloud saves. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that Beamdog will fix all of this in time, but boy does that make it hard to really recommend this version. It's uh, having spent several years of my life Playing in quite a few multiplayer servers, I'm really glad that Beamdog fixed the server browser and made it easier to join your friends through Steam. But those single-player campaigns are very much there, and they're charging £3 for the premium modules and £2 for a freaking portrait pack. That's uh, two chairs with an asterisk there. Yeah, I mean, for for me, I have I have a complicated history with this game because I played the tabletop role playing game that it was based off of for, oh, I'm I'm gonna call that like maybe eight to ten years, right? Um, and so I'm intimately familiar with the shortcomings of the underlying rule system, and the second I hit that character creation screen, like a fucking acid flashback, it all came back to me, just memories of. Dozens of fucking D&D source books splayed out open in front of me as I'm trying to find prestige classes and feats and spells and all that garbage. Um, I, I, mean, it's, I don't miss playing D&D from that era. But it's never one of nights. It was a perfectly fun RPG in a semi-familiar fantasy world. And for whatever reason, I got when, I, when we were reviewing the uh, enhanced edition of KOTOR, I got sucked into that. Mm-hmm. Like KOTOR, I really enjoyed KOTOR and KOTOR 2. Uh, this one, not so much. Um, I mean, the, the premium modules are pretty fun. I actually really like Kingmaker. That's a fun little bit of added kit that comes with it. And you get you do get a lot of content with this game. You get, uh, the, orig- you get the original game, the two expansions, all the Platinum Edition mods. And that's, that's going to give you quite a bit of playtime. Plus all the old mods, um, Dance with Rogues, Two More Horrors, etc., etc. You can You can play this game for about as long as you can find resources for it. Um... And but the, the the main thing where like it just kills my fun boner here is the technical issues. There's just so many technical mm-hmm. issues here, and it's kind of hard to like stay invested when like oh the UI crapped out. I can't select anything anymore. I gotta exit and I gotta reload the game and reprogress to where I was. And if you if you played these games before, you know you save scum the fuck out of them because you'll die quick. <laughs> um, but. Even then, that's just an annoying step, especially going to have to kill nine. Because, oh yeah, th- this game will not die from a regular kill. You got to kill nine, this fucker. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Strider straight up did a better job with Lutris on on this game than Beam Dog did. And once Mr. once like uh, SDL two CL gets to the point where it, it's pretty much flawless, 
you're going to have full screen. The only thing that the original version has that this game will lack is the Blink video or is the lack of like the Steam integration. And you're still relying on Blink video, but who the hell cares about that? I'll give it two chairs just because like the game is still serviceable, but oh man, it's 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 a hard pass on the two chairs. So that's that's one chair for fun. Tally that up. Unfortunately, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition gets a one chair just because fuck beam dog, you dropped the ball. Yeah, I, you really done goofed on this one. I want to chime in. All right. What's up, baby? Um I, I was genuinely upset, you know. This this is a game that I've intentionally um, avoided when it originally came out for Linux, and we we had like six games on Linux back in those days. I mean, when was this? Two thousand what three ish? Two thousand three. Yep. Yeah, actually had a Linux port back then, and it's like nope, so not my thing. I'm not into D and D, bro. Uh, I can dig it, but it's just not my thing. Didn't buy it, even though, you know, I only had five games when all the other Linux gamers had six. Uh, I had to talk myself into it. I had to psych myself up to download this. I was like, all right, Pepsi challenge this shit. At least get into it. And when you sit down, you're like, okay, fuck it. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. Only to be hit by this. It's like, we're, we're not doing this. And yeah, like, damn. All right. So 20 bucks, I guess if you want it, I mean, if you have the GOG version and you're on Linux and you want to avoid this bullshit, uh, just use Lutris to play it. I think you're going to have a better time because you can still do multiplayer with that, right? Yeah, so you works. can. For uh, direct connections and some of the persistent world servers yeah. are still up, I think. The server browser is dead. Hmm. Yeah, so you got you got to get the IPs, but that will uh, yeah. it'll still work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Final thoughts? I would say this is this is why you need the QA chair QA edition, right? Right. This is mm-hmm. this is why you should test your game before putting it out into production. And the forum is full of people having these issues. And if you're gonna be charging twenty dollars for this, you better you better ensure that it works. And these guys had an open beta too. They had ample mm-hmm. time to identify and plug these issues, and they didn't. And that's the biggest crime here. That is like definitely uh, we had no guarantee that we were gonna get used for this game or anything like this. I remember when Pedro like threw it, he's like, yo, if you join their Discord server and just do this thing and you get it for free, I lasted like eight minutes. It's like, yeah, I don't fucking care. Um <laughs> so to emphasize emphasize my point that I sit down to try to play the damn thing. Yeah, it's you know what the biggest crime here is? They introduced these issues like three weeks ago. Before that, while the game was in open beta, no, it worked just fine. It worked out of the box. There was no UI scaling being done by default. The high-res font actually worked, and you could actually see things in 4K. This shit was broken three weeks ago. What the hell, Beam Dog? <sighs> well, it's better than Updog. <laughs>